Hi, my name is Steve Jaynes, and welcome back to this audio class on how to read the Bible for understanding and power. This is the More Abundant Life Podcast, episode number 359, Because I Go Unto the Father, part one. In this episode, we're going to look at what Jesus said was going to happen because he was going to the Father. Starting at the Last Supper, Jesus Christ explained what the apostles would have after he had gone to the Father. The same thing would be available to all people who would believe it, like you. we're going to get into now is the subject on because I go unto the Father. And that is actually written in John chapter 14. The Gospel of John chapter 14. And we're going to look at this in a little bit of detail. In verse 12, it says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto the Father. And that's the topic of this teaching, because I go unto the Father. Because Jesus Christ went unto the Father, and he's going to go unto the Father, but he has for us already gone to the Father, we can do the first parts of this verse. He says, If you believe on me, the works that I do shall he do also. Now what did Jesus Christ do? Well, I read the Bible one time and uh, he healed some people. He walked on the water, he fed a bunch of people who needed some food. He took care of needs. And he says, Because I go unto the Father, if you believe on me, you're going to be able to do these works that I did. But that's not all that verse says. And it goes on to say, And greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto the Father. I think we have to look at what's going to happen because Jesus Christ will go unto the Father. I want to start in John chapter 13, verse 21. And we're going to look, we're going to skip around a little bit, but I'm going to show you some of what happened to Jesus Christ and some of what he taught after the Last Supper. He has the Last Supper with his disciples and apostles and after the Last Supper he's going to walk with his disciples to the Garden of Gethsemane and there he's going to be betrayed, captured, go through a couple mock trials, they're going to take him and crucify him. So you're talking after the Last Supper, and as he's on his way to the Garden of Gethsemane where he's going to be captured. This is the period of time that we're going to be reading about. In uh, John chapter 13 and 21, it says, When Jesus had thus said, he was troubled in his spirit, and testified and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, that one of you shall betray me. And See, Jesus Christ, he read those records in Isaiah. He knew what his mission was. And it says his, his, his spirit was troubled. It's talking about his, not his Holy Spirit, but himself. Within himself, he's a, little, he's a little troubled, you know, a little agitated. If you knew you just finished your last meal, and then you're going to be betrayed, put through everything that you just read about in Isaiah, he was a little troubled. And he says... I say unto you that one of you is going to betray me. Verse 22. And the disciples looked one on another, doubting and whom he spake. Now there was leaning on Jesus' bosom one of his disciples whom Jesus loved. And Simon Peter therefore beckoned to him that he should ask who it is should be of whom he spake. He then, laying on Jesus' breast, said unto him, Lord, who is it? And he answered, It is he to whom I shall give a sop. And when he had dipped the sop, 
he gave it to Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon. Now, in the lands and times of the Bible, when they ate, what they would have is a common dish, which would have like a gravy in it, or a broth of some sort, and they would take a piece of bread that was like a pita bread, and they would they would take that pita bread and they would wrap it around whatever they were going to eat, and then they would sop it in there, and they would eat it. They didn't have utensils like we did. That bread was a pliable type of bread. So they would take it, sop it in the little gravy, and eat it. Jesus did this to Judas. And he didn't put it in his own mouth. He gave it to Judas. Now that's a very loving thing to do. It shows respect. And he gave it to Judas. Verse 27. After the stop, Satan entered into him. Then said Jesus to him, What thou doest, do quickly. Now no man at the table knew for what intent he spake this unto him. For some of them, them thought, because Judas had the bag that Jesus had sent, said unto him, Buy those things that thou needest against the feast, or that he should give something to the poor. When it says he had the bag, that meant he was the guy that uh, was the accountant. He was in charge of the money, and he carried the money, and Jesus would say, hey, go buy this, he'd go buy it. Hey, we need this, and he'd do that type of stuff. He was the accountant for the group. So they thought he was just going to do an errand. He was like the purchasing agent for the group. Treasurer. Something like that. He went and took care of it. And verse 30 says, And when he had received the sop, went out immediately, and it was night. And I often thought about this, but when it was night, whenever you leave the Son of God, it is night. It is night. The dark night of the soul. He went out without the Son of God. Verse 31, Therefore, when he was gone out, Jesus said, Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. It was like Jesus saying, All right, things are going to start to happen now. God's going to be glorified now. If God be glorified in him, God shall also glorify him in himself, and straightway glorify him. Little children, yet a little while I am with you, and ye shall seek me. And as I said un unto the Jews, whether, whether I go, ye cannot come. So now I say unto you, a new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another, even as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if you love one another. Jesus, even at this time, was teaching. He was teaching. Jesus Christ taught all the time. And here he's teaching about love. And that word love is the Greek word agapeo, which means the love of God in the renewed mind and manifestation. And as you read the Gospels, you always got to keep in mind that these men that Jesus Christ talked to lived in a unique period of time. They lived in a time, well, they lived in a time before Jesus Christ was there, so they lived under the law administration. So they were familiar with the law of Moses. They also lived in the administration called the Christ administration when Jesus Christ is personally here on earth. And they were also going to live in a future administration for them known as the administration of grace or the administration of the mystery. Which is a administration that was going to start after Jesus Christ had accomplished all that he was going to accomplish after he was buried after he was risen from the dead, after he was ascended into heaven, and after God was going to send the gift of Holy Spirit. These men that he was talking to were going to live into that a new administration. And what he's t doing here, he's telling them about something that they were going to have in the future, this new type of love, this love of God. 
And he says, a new commandment. See, it's a new one. They had the ten and the, all the law of Moses, but they're going to get this new commandment. He says, that ye love one another as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. By this shall all men know you are my disciples, if ye love one another. He was teaching about that brand new love. And this is just a, a few hours before he was to be betrayed. He's telling them about this new love. Let's go to John chapter 14 verse 10. This is all part of that same period of time. In verse 10 he says, Believest thou not that I am in the Father and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doth the works. Jesus Christ saying, I'm walking with God, and God dwelleth in me. He dwells in me. Believe me, verse 11, that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very works' sakes. Jesus said, God, his Father dwelt where? In him. He was in him. And we'll continue reading. And verse 12 is where we're getting the title for this teaching. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. These works, and greater works than these, because I go unto my Father. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. If ye love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you for what? forever a comforter the comforter is talking about the Holy Spirit he says I'm going to send this comforter and this comforter is going to be with you for how long forever forever, forever. verse 17 even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not neither knoweth him but ye know him for he dwelleth with you and shall be what? In you. Right now, God's dwelling what? With them. But where is he going to be later? He shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more. But ye see me, because I live, ye shall live also. At that day ye should know that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, and I wear in you. He that hath my commandment, and keepeth him, he it is the Father loveth. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him, and will manifest myself to him. See, Jesus is saying, he says, I'm going to send the Comforter. It's going to come upon you. It shall be with you. And God is in me, and I will be in you. He's, t he's teaching them about what's going to happen. Go down to verse 26. It says, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, or the Holy Spirit. Now, can you get any plainer? What's the Comforter? Which is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Ye have heard how I said unto you, I go away and come again unto you. If ye love me, ye would, rejo would rejoice, because I say, I go unto my Father. 
for my Father is greater than I. Jesus is saying, I'm going to the Father. He keeps saying, hey, you know where I'm going? I'm going to the Father. I'm going to keep going. And he says, and you sh should rejoice because I'm going to the Father. Verse 39, and now I have told you before it come to pass, that when it comes to pass, ye might believe. Hereafter I will not talk much with you, for the prince of this world cometh, and hath nothing in me, but that the world may know that I love the Father, and as the Father gave me commandment, even so do I. Arise, let us go hence. And they, at this time they're leaving the table there at the Last Supper, and they're getting up, and they're going for a walk. And they're going to walk through the countryside and end up at the Garden of Gethsemane. And let's go to John chapter 15, verse 9. As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue in my love. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall, shall abide in my love. Even as I kept my Father's commandment, and abide in his love. These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain with you, and that your joy may be full. He's saying to those guys, your joy will be, will be full. You will be blessed. Verse 12. And this is my commandment. You ready? Here it is. That ye love one another as I have loved you. There's the commandment. Now, can anybody do this commandment? It's not that hard, really. It's not like you have to climb a hill, or you have to watch everything that you've ever said or will say, or you have to behave in such a way that you never make a mistake. You just have to love one another as I have loved you. Greater love no man hath than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Ye are my friends, if ye do whatsoever I command you. And he commanded them that they would love one another. Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doth, but I call you friends. For all things that, that I have heard of my Father I made known unto you. So in other words, Jesus Christ says, Listen, I'm going to have to leave for a little while, but I'll be back. And I'm going to send unto you the Comforter. And no greater love can a man have than to give down his life for his friends. And you're my friends. I call you friends, not servants. You're my friends. But there's going to, you are going to have my love be able to abide with you. Let's go to verse 26 of 15. It says, But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. And ye also bear witness because ye have been with me from the beginning. He's saying, I'm going to send my comforter and, my, and this comforter is going to be the spirit of truth and is going to proceed from the Father and he's going to testify of me. In chapter 16, verse 7. See, during this time, Jesus is telling them all the time, he says, I'm going to have to leave for a while, but I'm going to send something even greater for you. I'm going to send this comforter. And the whole time, they are, they are just sad as can be that Jesus says he's going to leave. And in verse 7 he says, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is expedient for you that I go away. That word expedient means it's profitable. It's a good thing that I go away. Because if he doesn't go, they're not going to be able to get the gift of Holy Spirit. And he says, For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. 
he's trying to get it through their heads. It's good. It's a good thing that he goes away. Because if he goes to the Father, they're going to be able to get this gift of Holy Spirit. They're going to be able to enter into the kingdom of God and see the kingdom of God. Verse 8 says, And when he has come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Of sin because they believe not in me. Of righteousness because I go unto my Father and ye see me no more. See, righteousness will be available to mankind because he goes to his father. He's on his way to his father. When that happens, he's trying, he is teaching this whole section, this is what's going to happen when I go unto the father. How be it, when he, and that he should be it, it, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of truth is come, it, not he, it will guide you into all truth, for it shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever ye shall hear, that shall it speak, and it will show you things to come. He, or it, shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and I'll show unto you. All things that the Father hath are mine. Therefore saith I, that he shall take of mine, and shall show it unto you. Yet a little while, and ye shall not see me. And again a little while, and ye shall see me, because what? I go to my Father. Are you getting the idea that Jesus Christ is telling them he's going to the Father? When I go to the Father, the works that I do shall ye do, and greater works than these because I go into the Father. I'm going to the Father. It's good that I go to the Father because I'm going to send this gift of the Holy Spirit. It's expedient for you. And this, this Spirit will guide you into all things and help you with things. Look at verse uh, 32 of chapter 16. Behold, the hour cometh, and yea, is now come, that ye shall be scattered, every man to his own, and shall leave me alone. And yet I am not alone, because the Father is with me. These things have I spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. I have overcome the world. Jesus Christ has overcome the world for us. Like it was prophesied in Isaiah, his righteous servant would take upon him the iniquity of us all. He would take all our shortcomings, all our diseases, all our sicknesses, all our sin, and make it available for us to have all that taken care of it for us. That we could have the righteousness of God. That we could do the works that Jesus Christ did and greater works. In the next episode, we're going to continue with the topic of Because I Go Unto the Father. Jesus Christ is going to the Father. And in the next episode, we will learn more details about that. In the last episode, I shared on a series that I did, The Last Supper Through the Resurrection of Jesus Christ. In that series, I read every record that deals with the Last Supper through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from all four Gospels in chronological order. And I suggested if you want to get more detail about the Last Supper through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, it is a good series. I also did a series on the love of God. See, in John 13, we read about we're to love like Jesus Christ loved. It is a biblical studies class on the love of God. And we get into the topics of the love of God is the greatest. We also look at as Jesus Christ loved, 
how to walk in love and what walking in love looks like. One of the things that we're called to do, along with studying the Word of God, reading the Word of God, practicing the presence of God, is to learn how to walk in love as Jesus Christ loved. Because Jesus Christ is our example of how to walk in love. The audio class is available on the website stevejanes.com It's also available as a podcast episodes number 282 through 287 